Welcome to the Brain Soul Success Show, where we learn, explore, and create your powerful positive healing for life. I'm your host, Louise Schwartz Walter. I'm the creator of a five part mind body soul methodology that clears the subconscious blocks to success. From engaging transformational interviews, brain soul success stories, and the secrets shared by brain and spiritual experts, you will reconnect, revitalize, and transform your powerful life. It's time for you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Brain Soul Success Radio. We are here with Kyleen Turhune, and I'm so excited to have you here, Kyleen. Uh, I know that you, um, you've done some great, great work in the world, and as a functional medicine nutritional practitioner, you're that autoimmune protocol coach, a personal trainer. Gosh, you've got all this amazing experience, and I've watched you kind of put it together now and create some programs out there that are really, really helping some people. Yeah. So, you know, so tell us about that. Tell us how you got to even be this coach and what brought you to be to doing functional medicine. Hi, Louise. Thanks for having me on. I'm so <laughs> excited to anytime I get to talk about this stuff um, to share, you know, what it is that I do and get it out there. So thank you for having me as a guest. Um, so yes, you said it. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and that's the longest title in the world. <laughs> But, uh, so it started back in 2015. I mean, if you really want to rewind it, I've been interested in nutrition. I've been interested in fitness, all these things before that, but really my journey, um, my kind of aha, uh, life changing, debilitating moment, I, if you will say happened in 2015 where I spent about two full weeks in what, when looking back at it, I can only describe as a chronic panic attack. So during that period of time, I had no idea what was going on in my body. I was completely terrified. I was having panic attacks every day. I could not sleep for two weeks. Um, if I did sleep, I would wake up and start crying and, you know, holding on to my husband. He had to take, um, every time I tell this, I'm going to cry. He had to take um, time off of work to literally babysit me to take me to the doctor. I could not be by myself. I was just, I had intrusive thoughts that were incredibly scary to me because I felt like they were not coming for me and they were not coming for me. And, um, I went to the doctor twice. My mom, if my husband couldn't babysit me, my mom would babysit me. And for someone who was in her late twenties, I was like, this is not normal. Um, I've never experienced anything like this before. I had already started changing my diet to be healthier. You know, this should have been like the prime of my life. And so I was just completely devastated. I was scared out of my mind. I was a few steps away from committing myself to a psych ward because I didn't want to be a burden to my family and I needed help and I didn't know where else to go. I went to my doctor and asked, I knew enough at the time, Mm -hmm. um, to ask for, uh, like a hormone test. I said, do you think I should get a hormone test? And she said, no, you know, if you're still, uh, if, you know, getting your periods, there's no real reason to get your hormones tested, but here's an antidepressant. And by the way, you're going to have to be on this for a year. And so I'm sitting there in the office, my husband who took the day off work or a few hours off work to be with me. And she's up over here on my right side with no answers. And my face is flushing. You know, I'm trying to contain this devastation that I'm feeling because she's literally not giving me any help. And so, you know, we fill the prescription. I'm thinking I'm going to do everything I can not to take this, but I'm going to have it as an emergency just in case they can't figure this out. Mm -hmm. We leave, we go to lunch and I just start crying because I'm like, what, what is this? What is happening to my body? Mm -hmm. And so I, for whatever reason, decided to follow my gut and I found somebody that would give me hormone testing. Okay. Turns out my hormones were just gone. 
Like I was what they used to call adrenal fatigue. I was in like the third phase of exhaustion. My hormones were completely kaput. I didn't have any cortisol. I didn't, you know, I didn't have enough progesterone. Everything was just way out of whack. And so of course you're going to be experiencing all these crazy, crazy things in your body. And that wasn't necessarily the underlying issue, but that one thing, being able to identify that allowed me to start digging myself out. I was able to get some help. I was able to um, start working on these things. And that got me, quote unquote, sane enough, balanced enough, functional enough Mm -hmm. that I could continue my journey and figure out what was actually going on. So through that process, I found FDN. I actually was uh, constantly thinking about hormones. Like, how can I fix my hormones? How can I fix my hormones? What's FDN? I'm sorry to interrupt. What's FDN? Oh, sorry. That's the shortened version, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so that's my little acronym. Okay. And so I was constantly thinking about hormones. How can I fix my hormones? I found this hormone group online that I ended up being a participant in. So you got some functional lab testing. And so I got to test my hormones again. I got to do some other things. I got a lot of education through this. Turns out one of the girls that led it was also an FDN. And so when I was thinking, okay, how can I you know, learn more. How can I heal myself? And now that you start sharing your story and talking and, you know, all these things, people want to start asking you questions. So then it became, how can I not only heal myself, but how can I help these other people that are coming to me with issues that are bigger than eat less, exercise more. And so I found FDN and I decided to educate myself with the goal of healing my body first and then secondarily helping others. And I learned all about gut health and it became just totally an obsession. I just loved it. And so now that's my primary focus. I do so many live videos and educational videos on poop (laughs) and parasites and bacteria and all this kind of fun stuff. And so just going through that process really helped me identify a lot of hidden stressors inside my body that were wreaking a lot of havoc. I had a lot of gut dysfunction. And so through the, throughout the past few years, I've been able to basically heal myself. And the one thing I really love to share with women, because I know a lot of women experience some level of anxiety, and I really think there's two kinds. There's the crazy kind that I experienced where you're like, this is not normal, and this feels like it's coming out from outside of me. And that kind of anxiety, I have to say, the healthier you are and the better your gut is, the less of that you'll ever experience, if any. Um, The other kind is what I've been experiencing um, in the past few months, which is I'm really, really busy and this is a normal kind of anxiety just because you're super stressed, right? Like you're just, you have so much on your plate, but that's normal. So, um, so yes, that's the real short version. 2015 totally crashed, went on this journey to figure out what was going on in my body, hopefully to educate other people as well, became super incredibly passionate about it. So now I work with other people so that they can feel their best too. So your whole story is your path of how you got to where you are now and the work that you're doing with women in the world now, making such a difference in their hormones and their gut health and how they eat and you know, your programs, the whole thing, right? Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, it's all connected. So, so one of the things I really like to to make sure my clients know is, yes, nutrition is totally important. It's totally the foundation. But if you're, if you're somebody that's already dug in and like, you know, is not seeing results just from that, then maybe you should get some functional lab testing done to see what's actually happening. But the flip side is also true. Like if you haven't already worked on your nutrition, start there. Because for a lot of people, that's it. That's the answer. But for some people, they need to go a little further. I was definitely one of those people. And so tell us, you know, tell us, so so that was your journey of how you got to even into functional medicine, you know, into, into that whole world of, of working with not only yourself first, but then others, which Mm -hmm. most people find, you know, a lot of health practitioners find that Yeah, they get sick first and then they end up in this whole world of natural health and then educating and educating other people. What sets you apart from all of those other functional um, diagnostic nutritional practitioners? What's, what's different about you? Well, I'm amazing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you know, I really wanted to become the practitioner that I wanted. So okay. um, I wanted somebody that was going to hold my hand 
And so I mentioned to you before we got on this video, this past year was a lot of learning for me in terms of how I wanted to incorporate that with people. And so one of the things I found out was if you work with me one-on-one -on -one as a client who's getting functional lab testing, like we're testing your stool, we're testing your hormones, we're doing all these things, I will not give you your, your test results and then say, see a go, you know, do your own thing. Because I actually did try that with a couple people, you know, because okay. one of the desires when you are, um, when you really want to help people get healthier, one of your motivations is, well, I want to make it as affordable as possible, right? And so, so I was like, well, I'll try this DIY situation. I'll give you your test results. I'll give you your protocol. And then do it yourself. You're on your own. See you later. Hope you feel better. And the, the information is valid. The protocol is excellent, all that kind of stuff. But one of the things I found is, and it's exactly what I needed, you need somebody to hold your hand through the process. Mm -hmm. And so I really kind of figured out how much people need and um, you know, went through the process and you know how to communicate. And so I kind of became the practitioner that I wish I had had. <laughs> okay. and, um, so now if you work with me, you get the test results, you get a very, very comprehensive protocol and results session, but then we're going to meet up again and we're going to say, okay, your supplements came in. Let's review why you're taking these, when you take them, how you take them to be most effective, et cetera. Um, and then we're going to check in, you know, approximately every two weeks or whatever it is that we set up throughout the duration of this protocol because stuff happens. You can be the right. most um, obedient client. You can be the most, I will do this. I will cooperate, whatever. But you know, something in life is going to happen or you're going to have a reaction to a supplement or, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be there to be able to say, okay, well, yeah, you, this X happened. So we're going to do Z. And so, um, yeah, so I'm able to set that up and develop more of a relationship with my clients, which I really like. And so even if you go to like a functional, uh, functional medicine doctor or something who has like a physical building, just like a, an MD, mm -hmm. it's the same kind of process. They're going to spend an hour with you where an MD might spend 15 minutes, but it's still, here's your test results. See you later. So with me, you really get that, on, that ongoing relationship, that ongoing coaching process to make sure at the end that we see the results that we want. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, that is what's missing, of course. You know, most people, at least that's what I hear too. People want that relationship. They want yeah. that intimacy. They want to know that they can ask questions and get the help they need. Um, so do you actually find then that when you're working with people, give us some examples. Give us some examples of um, some of, the, you know, some of the test cases or some of the case studies, things that have happened when you've worked with women who are coming in with maybe what you came in with, right? With that panic with that anxiety, with that, oh my gosh, I am so stressed out and I'm tanking, you know, what, uh, what happens? How can you help them? Um, just like you found the help for yourself. What do you do now? So there's two main ways I work with people. One is the one-on-one -on -one that I just described. And we'll really, that's where, you know, if you come with an autoimmune condition, if you are struggling with like chronic issues, you've already worked on your diet, we're going to dig deep. We're going to see what your body's telling us, where there are some stressors that we need to address, where there are some healing opportunities. And we're going to address that through um, lifestyle, through supplementation, and of course, through nutrition as well. Then I also have an online program that really focuses on the nutrition side of things. And so if you haven't um, started on that area, you can work with me in that area as well. We're going to really dig into discovering what's personal for you because everybody's situation is very different. Um, and so I've had people go through both scenarios. So one of the one-on-one -on -one examples that I have is actually a guy. And I know we talk about my, I primarily work with women, but I love to share this guy because it's such a dramatic result. And um, he just like completely blew me away. He came in and um, laundry list, I mean laundry list of symptoms, digestive issues, anxiety, PTSD, bloating, fatigue, um, moodiness. I mean, just you name it. He was just a mess. And he was like, I need to fix this. I'm at my wit's end. The first phone call that we had, which was the, t uh, the results, the testing results and protocol call, um, he was in tears and said, Kyleen, I no longer feel like a hypochondriac because he hadn't been finding answers in the medical community and his test results came back and showed that he had candida, he had yeast, he had parasites, he had bacterial imbalance and he had worms. 
That's mm-hmm. crazy for mm-hmm. you to have all of those things going on and not be able to find the answer at your local practitioner. And so all of those are associated with what? Anxiety, fatigue, the digestive issues that he had been experiencing. I mean, it was just, it was such a succinct answer for him. And so we, we, because he had so much going on, we did this low and slow protocol. And so we worked together for about five or six months and we worked on nutrition. We worked on lifestyle. We optimized sleep. We did all these things. We obviously addressed all of the issues that came up on the stool test. And within weeks, it was, it was mind blowing how much better he was feeling. His mood completely changed he actually physically moved it was it was amazing I get this call and he's like I have this life epiphany he's like I know what I want to do with my life over the next like 10 years I have like a five or ten year life plan now and just all these are gonna have motivation he had energy he was feeling better he lost a ton of weight and that wasn't even the goal and so there was just so many positive results for him. And we're at the point now where we need to retest and make sure we've kind of cleaned everything up hundred mm-hmm. percent, but just, just even how he feels is, is reward to me and, and proof that what, what we do when we address all three aspects, lifestyle and nutrition and whatever is in there that we need to kind of, um, uh, control and get rid of mm-hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. So he's a really, really great example of the testing. And then I had several people run through my uh, six week uh, online program as well that focuses, like I said, more on the nutritional side. It's called Stop Dieting and Live Your Life, Discover Your Nutrition. And um, one of my favorite testimonials was from a girl named Whitney. And she had suffered for a long time with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune condition and causes a lot of pain. And a lot of times people have issues with, um, you know, diarrhea or constipation and just a lot of, uh, a lot of problems and sim- symptoms there. And, um, it's, it's typically when you have something like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or things like that, a lot of times there's a lot of pain associated with that. And so, um, I was really excited to have her in the program. She chose the third level of the elimination, which was very, very similar to the autoimmune protocol. And uh, so when I got her testimonial back at the end, six weeks, six weeks, Louise, six weeks. Oh, that's so awesome. She's, I know, it's amazing. She said she's worked in a holistic healthcare office for about eight years and had never seen the results that she saw in six weeks. And her favorite result was that she didn't have a single ulcerative colitis symptom during that six weeks. Not and one. what do you what do you actually attribute that to? Was it a parasite cleanse? Because I find that parasites are actually create emotions in the body. Yes. So each different kind of parasite is connected to different emotions, and mm-hmm. I always found that completely fascinating. And so now it's like I play a little detective work. Sometimes. Yeah. People with that, you know, I'm like, okay, this is just amazing. So what did you find was the biggest? You know, the biggest. Um, I guess thing, whatever you did with her that helped her have that result so quickly in six weeks. So for her, um, and for most people with autoimmune conditions, if they haven't already worked on their nutrition, leaky gut is a precursor for autoimmunity. Yeah. So there are, um, three main things that have to kind of align together at the same time to trigger an autoimmune condition and leaky gut, which is damaged to your gut lining is one of them. So going on something as strict as an autoimmune protocol elimination diet, um, can be extremely effective, extremely quickly because Mm -hmm. you're taking out the foods that are causing inflammation and damage to that gut lining. And you're intentionally bringing in foods that are healing and nourishing to that gut lining. And so she just had a tremendous response very quickly. Um, And a lot of people do where your body, when you give it what it needs, it knows what to do. Every cell has its designed purpose and then it gets to work when you take the burden away from the body. And so she was able to begin healing. Right. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's so, you know, what's interesting to me is it's really not that hard. It's actually very simple. Oh, I know. Yeah. But it's kind of like people just don't know what to do or what that is, yeah. you know, so they do need an educator. They need someone like you to hold their hand and walk through, you know, not just the protocol, but, but how, how to, how to be in their own mindset around that too, how they can, can be consistent with taking those supplements and staying away from some of those foods that are causing them problems. 
you know? Have you also seen the opposite, possibly, where, yes, you can hand them kind of a protocol, walk through, hey, this is why, this is what you need to do for your body, and, um, and if the follow-through isn't there with the diet, they don't quite get the same result. Have you found that, too? Um, yes, yeah, so there's kind of a, a two-part there. If your nutrition, your nutrition is sort of what carries you through, and then what continues your success afterwards. So like with my online program, and Whitney just as an example with the ulcerative colitis, nutrition was the only thing we did. There's no testing, there's no supplements, there's no anything that goes into that program. It's simply figuring out what foods work best for your body. And then okay. at the end of that, they all have an opportunity if they wanna up level and they, they wanna keep digging and they wanna you know get some testing, they can do that. Mm -hmm. But for her, it was really just that nutrition component was huge, huge, huge. Mm -hmm. For some people, though, um, they can – I'll give you a really good example. Candida or a yeast overgrowth. Mm -hmm. If you are – targeting that hardcore with some herbal supplementation, that's awesome. But if you're still drinking a lot of fruit juice and eating ice cream at night and drinking soda and just all these sugary foods and having pancakes in the morning, <laughs> you're literally feeding what you're trying to kill at the same exactly. time. You can't do that. Even if you think you're on a super healthy um, diet and you're drinking a lot of fruit juice and eating a lot of fruit for that particular issue, it's a problem. So you have to kind of know what's going on in your body and kind of be your own little detective and figure it out. If you're, if you're not going to get testing, if you're going to test it, you know, gives you answers very quickly and skips all those steps. But yeah, so it, it definitely plays a role. And then in the same example with candida, what's going to keep you, um, in maintenance mode you know, for the next six months, year, five years, 10 years for life really is finding that right diet that does work for your body, that doesn't feed the opportunistic bacteria, but it feeds right. the good bacteria. And so, yeah, nutrition is huge, huge, huge for that. Right, right. What's your feeling on, you know, there was a fad that went, that was going around for a while around, um, I don't even know what they called it when I look back, but it was actually eating someone else's poop. Oh, uh, fecal because transplant. of the good back because of the good bacteria that's in in someone's gut. Because I had yeah. someone come into my office and they said, you know, I want to do this, and um, you know, I think I want to do this, but the person that I'd want to give me their poop would be you. And I went, oh, okay. And it was just kind of shocked for a minute. I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. So we had to talk about it. I remember that. So yes. I, you know, there was so, a there's yeah a, a, a fad going on for that for a while. What what do you think about that? Yeah, so that's called fecal transplants, and you can get it put into little pills that you take. And you're exactly right. The whole point is to reestablish a healthy microbiome. So if somebody's been on you know like a million rounds of antibiotics, or they're just really struggling and can't recover themselves. That's an option, but in my mind, that has worked for some people. In my mind, that is what you would call a last resort. Like, this is like someone whose immune system is completely depleted, whose gut is just like not healing with nutritional support and with maybe some supplementation, you know, support and some functional lab testing. But if you haven't like done all of those levels of figuring out why your body is misbehaving, because it, 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 one thing I like to say too is your body's on your side. If it's, if it's giving you symptoms, it's telling you that it either needs more of something like a nutrient or it needs less of something, something that's causing inflammation, something that's causing damage or something that's overgrowing. And so really, and anytime you have a symptom is saying, please give me more of X or please give me less of this, right? Right. And right. so if you haven't already done the work, to, if you're not willing to change your lifestyle, if you're not willing to change your nutrition, if you're not willing to dig deep, I wouldn't be willing to take a poo supplement. If you're at like the end of the rope mm -hmm. and you're thinking about doing something like that, do a ton of research. And you have to know that, um, you, have to, you have to know where it's coming from. You have to have extreme quality control, right? You have to make sure that, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. So not something I typically recommend, but yeah, it's out there. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious. I was like, wow, hey, that's, you know, because it's gut health. Everything is gut health, right? So it's, yeah. It's about I think putting in mm -hmm. gut health and the term microbiome like exploded in 2018, which is good, which is good. Yeah. But like anything, you get a lot of uh, interesting information as well. <laughs> you know, I did, but I did that like 25 years ago. So, you know, when I had all my autoimmune stuff and I was really sick, I worked with somebody back then, a naturopath who said, you need to take nine capsules of this like very expensive probiotic a day. 
Mm, mm. And I was like, hey, I'm like 5'3". Nine capsules is a lot. And I started doing the math, too. It was so expensive, you know? And yeah. I was just like, but you know what? I listened to him, and he was totally right. Wow. And good I've always, I mean, I'm still good with that. That's just, I'm very consistent, you know? So I, I totally understand everything you're saying, and I love what you're doing, and I love how you're helping people on such a deep level with very quickly, though. That's what I love hearing is those quick results yeah. that you're getting. So, so Kylene, what are you creating now? So what's going on now? What's your new creation going forward for 2019? In terms of uh, work anything, or anything, business work, you know, what's happening for you? What do you want to, what do you want to have happen in this new year? Oh, what don't I want to have <laughs> in, in this new year? There's so many goals I have. Um, so I just talked about my online program. I ran the uh, beta program or, you know, the practice version in 2018. I really got my feet wet with it. I made sure that it worked the way I wanted, that people were getting the results. Um, I really figured out some things I needed to upgrade, that I needed to change, I needed to tweak. Because I asked people to participate with the specific intention of giving honest feedback. I want to make this the best I can. And so I got that feedback and I've improved it and I'm launching it in February of this year. Um, so I'm super really excited about that. I'm probably going to run that four or five times this year. Can't wait. So What's that's the name me. of the program? Tell us the name of the program again and how people can access it. So that one is the Stop Dieting and Live Your Life, Discover Your Nutrition. That's six weeks. It's online. You can go to the tinyfitdiva.com slash stop dieting. And um, so that one's going to be run several times this year. I really want to get out and speak more. I want to do things like this. I love being on podcasts. I love being interviewed. I love giving lunch and learns. I love talking. <laughs> so, um, you can't I mean, tell. No, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because I went to school for opera, actually. And I was in, I did like performances and I took acting classes. I did all this kind of stuff. And it was funny because when I made this career change, I was like, now how did that connect at all? And I was like, you know, and it was totally like God ordained, like it was supposed to be that way because I have no problem being in front of people. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I love that. I think that's a great goal. And I so I so want to support you, you know, in making that happen in 2019, you know, for yourself. Um, so if you were going to leave, leave all of us with one, one tip, what would it be? One tip. Um, one, of the, one of the most important things I think to know is that you are your best advocate. So in my specific situation, I was told, you're fine, um, except maybe you need an antidepressant, which was completely wrong. It was completely not what my body needed. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to figure it out. And I have so many clients, like, you know, I mentioned Josh, um, felt like a total hypochondriac, had been told he's totally fine, knew he wasn't fine. So found somebody that would give him answers. And I mean, Louise, I thought about this before we got on the call. Boy, oh boy, do I wish I had you in 2015. Because even though I had all this physical stuff that um, I needed to kind of work through, and, and we, we just talked about that, that it was terrifying. And I had all this emotional and mental th stuff going on as well. And boy, did I wish I had someone like you to kind of help guide me through that process. So just, just find, you know, do your research. You mm -hmm. are your best advocate. You know your body. Mm -hmm. You know what good feels like. You know how you feel now. And you know how you want to feel. So find somebody that's willing to listen to you, that's willing to work with you through the process in whatever way feels best to you. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good advice. And so how can people get a hold of you? They want to be a part of your program. They want to work with you. What's the best way to get a hold of Kyleen? Yes. So there's so many ways, but I'm going to keep it super short. You can always go to my website, thetinyfitdiva.com. Um, so you can check out blog posts and podcasts and all that kind of stuff there. I do have a podcast, the Tiny Fit Diva podcast. That comes out weekly. I interview, I've interviewed Louise. Um, I interview experts from across the country on a ton of different health topics. It's really, really fun. Um, and then you can actually join my free Facebook group. It's called Stop Dieting and Live Your Life. And uh, so you can go to Facebook and join that. But that's a way to connect to me. Um, you can see a lot of information informational videos that I post in the past every once in a while I'll pop in and run a fun challenge um, you can ask you can use it for support you can ask questions in that group and I will personally get back to you so that's a really good way if you're kind of like I don't know who you are but I want to get to know you a little better that's a good place to do it 
a good place to do it. Well, yeah. thank you so much. We so appreciate you being on Brain Success Radio today, and we wish everybody a great, great day. And I look forward to working with you in the future here with Kylene. And um, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Louise. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome, everyone. This is Dr. Louise Swartz Walter, and I'm here with my guests at the Brain Soul Success Show. And this is our roundtable meeting. And uh, you might have been here before, but these amazing, powerful women are really making, I'm going to say, a dent in the world, a dent in the universe, kind of like uh, Steve Jobs said. <laughs> so they're, they're really rocking the planet with their good work out there. And we're excited to be with you. It's the new year. And uh, we wanted to have a discussion today about, you know, kind of debunking New Year's resolutions. You know, what's really happening for people when they get started in the new year and they're all excited, plus it's 2020, it's a new decade, um, and what happens when we set those goals and intentions? So we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. And I'll just briefly have them introduce themselves again to you all. So, um, Yolanda, tell us a little bit about your work and, and your background as we get started here. Hello, everyone. My name is Yolanda Haywood, and I am known as the Breakout Expert. I am a keynote speaker. I am a corporate trainer, and I'm also a rebound coach. I really work with individuals and companies to help them rebound and walk in their highest level of freedom um, that they are looking for at whatever point in life they are. And so um, my background is ministry for 20 something years. We won't date myself, um, corporate America. And then I transition over to what I love and what I do the best, which is coaching, because I really believe in helping others live their best life. Awesome, awesome. You're doing such great work in the world. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, and Trina, tell us, tell us a little bit about you and your background. Hi, everybody. My name is Trina Rice, and um, I am the Energetic Signature Mentor. Um, I'm also an occupational therapist. Um, I help, like, the misfits, the highly energetic, the highly sensitive and energetically aware to become more empowered and to get that communion with their bodies um, so they can have a life of freedom and ease. Um, I... I I'm a coach and a facilitator and um, have owned a business for therapy for over 15 years, um, working with kids on the spectrum. So it's incorporating all of that into the magic that we all be. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And again, thank you for your good work in the world. You know, that's a niche that's really needing help, yes. you know, and you're doing it. So congratulations. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. And thank you for being here. And Sinclair, tell us a little bit about yourself and your awesome work out there in the world. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Louise. I appreciate that. I love spending time with you guys. Um, I'm Sinclair Keneally from Vision Nation, and I'm the change maker's mentor. And what that means is Michael, my life partner, and I help folks detox to thrive and to scale their businesses. So we support change makers to do their best work in the world, and that usually starts with um, having to detox everything that's coming at us in the environment. Awesome. Awesome. You do such good work in the world. And I know you have this new program that just really leaped off the ground in a beautiful way. So, yeah. yeah. So awesome. So awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Um, so we have some powerful, you know, this powerful energy right here in this little room with all of you. And again, I just want to like have this discussion about, you know, what happens in 2020, it's a new year, we turn the page of the calendar, you know, everyone's excited because it's a new decade, right? And we start out with these amazing goals and intentions, and whether you call them that or resolutions, um, I think that, you know, it's, it's actually said that, you know, people, uh, it's about 80 to 90% of people who start out with right intention um, fall off by February or March on those goals. So an example might be an exercise goal. You know, you start out, you're saying, I'm going to lose that, that weight from over Christmas, and I'm going to exercise, I'm going to lose that 15 or 20 pounds, and people are at the gym on January 1st through the 7th, <laughs> working really hard, and then it kind of falls off. So, you know, what, what do you guys think about, think about that, and what, uh, you know, what, what, could you, what could we do differently, you know? So I, I'm just kind of curious about your, your opinions on that and, and where you fall with that. 
So who would like to start and just, you know, what do you think about New Year's resolutions and, and do they work? Well, I, I think it's important for us to all acknowledge like we're savvy and the audience is savvy. Of course, most of them don't work, right? And um, that that is its own self-fulfilling prophecy where we've got the, the annual eye roll now, you know? <laughs> but one way that we could, you know, skew this conversation so that it's really useful for everyone is to remember the positive intention behind them. Like it's wonderful to want more. It's wonderful to feel a calling forward into the next version of you, whether it's you know, your physical strength, or, you know, this is the year you're really going to build your business, or this is the year you're really going to connect with spirit in every facet of your life. These are great, great impulses. And it's wonderful to honor them. Let's, let's just do it in a way that's actually going to work. Right? Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. And yeah, we want to honor ourselves for having that intention. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And what do you think either either uh, Trina or Yolanda? What do you think? about New Year's resolutions? You know, resolutions have never worked for me. And <laughs> as soon as I would make one, I would break it. So I was like, you know what, what's the purpose? Um, but what I actually love doing is looking at what inspires me and choosing a life that actually works for me and inspires. So I go into the new year asking the question, like, so what could I create this year or who and what can I be that would inspire me? Um, so I, I just, there's more to that and we can go in as we talk more, but it's really looking at those things that help me create, generate and keep me going. It's what makes me feel alive. Basically. What does what makes you feel alive? Awesome. So what makes you feel alive? More about inspiration. Yeah. Allowing yourself to follow that, your own inspiration. Great advice. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. And how about you, Yolanda? What do you think about New Year's resolutions? I have mixed emotions. So I might be Trina's client. Maybe I'm the misfit. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to say they do work <laughs> if you work them. You know, one of the things that I found for myself, I, I can't say that I make one every year. But when I do, um, I had to look back at all of the people who always say, they don't work, they don't work. And I go, well, why does mine work? And I think it has to do with my heart's intent, where I am in that season of my life. And um, I'm not just making it because it's New Year's, let's make a resolution. Usually I'm doing it because I'm really seeking change or I'm really seeking truth in an area. Mm -hmm. And when I want to seek, I generally find it. So I think it comes down to how determined are you to really work this newfound decree or commitment, confession, whatever it is you want to term it. And if the commitment level is there, then it'll work. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So it's about that commitment and that determination, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I was just thinking that just because it's the new year and that's when people set goals traditionally, um, many um, entrepreneurs, the people I work with, and the leaders and entrepreneurs I work with, set set goals all year long. You know, oh, yeah. so we're actually in holding intention all year long. Um, every time I reach another level, I, I I set the other I set the bar higher. You know, so it, it's continuing to do that. One of, one of the activities that I do in the in the new year, and I can look back on the old ones. It's kind of fun. I I do. What do I want to let go of? What am I grateful for? And what do I want to intend for the new year? Mm -hmm. And then I look back mm -hmm. on last year and I still haven't redone my kitchen. <laughs> and so I was like, that's going on the list again this year because we're actually having to now. We're moving and selling our house and having to. So, um, so sometimes they don't, they don't always get accomplished, but at least it was a, an intention. It was written down, right? It was, it was there. Yeah. It was there. So great, great little tips and great little wisdom on uh, on on how people can really set themselves, in, you know, forward for 2020. Any other little activities or things that you do, like I just mentioned, that also helps you get focused as you're setting your intention <clears throat> goals. You know, so how do you how you know is something you guys do that you can share with our group here that would be beneficial? I'm gonna say for myself. Um, 
So I didn't come into the new year, the new decade, the 2020 vision, all of that fun stuff. I didn't roll in on January the 1st with a new year's resolution. I kind of came in in silence. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to define this year. And that's really odd for me because my, I stopped all business activity in October. From October to December of every year is all about me, resetting myself, beginning to hold my intention, setting my calendar for the next year. So usually by the first of the year, I'm there. I know exactly where it is I'm going. This year it didn't come as quickly for me. Um, so what I did and a, a tip I would like to share with the viewers is I think it's always important to look back in order to look forward. Mm -hmm. Look back to look forward. And when I look back, what was happening for me from October to December was yet another le level of healing. Mm -hmm. um, mentally, emotionally, financially, all of the Lees, <laughs> look of the Lee family, all the Lee family was happening for Yolanda, right? <laughs> and with that, I always come up with one word. So my resolution is found in one word. So my word for the year is heal. I want to heal and I want to be healed. So everyone that I'm coming in contact with, I'm holding my intention that there's some level of healing in some kind of way that will happen. And that doesn't mean something is always sad or sometimes it's, um, it's good. You don't, it's, it's mending something that's broken that you may not even know that's broken and it's healing you to a higher level so that you operate in the optimum level of health and wealth and strength. So I had to look back and see what the thing was so that now I can live it out for the rest of the year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I love your word heal. You know, I'm a healer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that. I love that word heal. And I also thank you for sharing that you, you take off some time. You know, I think that's really wise. Um, and, and a lot of, you know, a lot of our audience here needs to hear that, too, that it's good to take some little white space so that you can create, you know, and spend time healing you. I, I know that that's actually what I do. That's what I'm doing with a lot of my you know, entrepreneurs and the, the thought leaders that I work with is um, I find that we invest in a lot of business programs and we don't get to where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't need that. Those are all good. But it is that internal work that actually uplifts you and uplifts your business. And when you're right. doing that and you're clearing those blocks, that's when you reach a higher plane mm -hmm. in both your life or business or whatever your intentions are. Yes. So, I love that. Congratulations on your work there. Yeah, yeah. And I know, and, and, and I, like I said, I think other people really need to hear that too. So awesome. Yeah. Anybody else have a tidbit, you know, or a little, little snippet, secret, something that you do that helps, you know, helps move the needle for you? I would, I am. Um, one of the things that I love doing mm -hmm. is writing out a gratitude list. Okay. Like all the things I'm grateful for. And I just start on a piece of paper and I just start writing. And this year I was like, what's it going to take for me to get to at least a hundred things that I'm grateful for. Um, and I love having that list because those times when you do, you know, you start to question yourself or you might get a little down or a little dampened. It's really awesome to go back to that list and like, look at all the things that you're grateful for. Um, and I love doing that for what we were talking about the past to be like, okay, these are all the things I've been grateful for. And now what else can I be grateful for that? I haven't even acknowledged. Ooh, nice. um, and one of the other things with what you, both you, Lawanda, <laughs> like my mouth's like, rah, and Louise, like, <laughs> I put, put it together. Put together. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, is basically, it's also everything that, we've been holding on to from the past like we make all these past intentions or resolutions or goals whatever you want to call them targets um that we hold on to when we never allow ourselves to go past what that was because maybe they weren't accomplished mm -hmm. but what if you're willing to let go of everything like all of that past intentions um so that you can actually move forward into the future with a lot more ease and maybe a lot more fun. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So like if mm -hmm. anything that you guys are holding on to that won't allow you to create and generate and choose that life or the word for the year, whatever it is for you, mm -hmm. 
just be willing to let go of all that um, and move forward. Just like Louise was talking about our kitchen. It's not like making it wrong that the kitchen didn't get done. Sometimes you, that's like that seed that gets planted. And even though it didn't get done last year, look, it's now started. Mm -hmm. So holding on to anything of the past, um, let it go. So and let it go. That's great. Yeah, that's really good. Absolutely. The more I know, the more that I've let go. And, and it's hard, actually. Yeah. You know, we could talk about those challenges here in a minute. <laughs> you know, the more the more I let go, the more it comes in. Mm. You know, that's, that's key, Louise. I, mm -hmm. At the end of the year, I was going through I have several companies and I was going through all of the different businesses I have. And there was this one that almost felt a little like a thorn. And I was just like, oh, I'm struggling here. And it hit me. It was time to let it go. Mm -hmm. I needed to say the words. We are closing the doors. Mm -hmm. The grace for that. It was gone. I, it was one of my first companies and I did a lot of things right, but I did a lot of things that could have been done differently mm -hmm. and um, it didn't have the proper structure. So finally I say the words, I let it go. I feel free. I get healed of trying to hold on to it. And then so many other things started to open up for me in the place that I'm in right now. I'm like, I just needed to let it go. And That's it's awesome. opened me up for abundance. So I get that train of big time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's great. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think I needed to hear that actually. There's some things that I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Stuff, right? So thank you. Thank you for that, Yolanda. I want to sing the Frozen song and start dancing. <laughs> Let it go. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> freedom, right? You know that freedom of just like, oh, you know, <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. And Sinclair, how about you? What little like secret tidbit, you know, what, what have you used in your life to, to help you move forward when you're stuck? Uh, there's a couple of tips that I want to share with folks today about how to really move forward. One of the things that I love that Yolanda said right up front was, you know, she didn't have a word coming into this year, even though she normally does. And I think that is thing number one if you want to move your life forward is to be honest with yourself about your own process and honor that more than, Oh, I should have something cause I've done it before, or it's what other people are doing. You got to start by checking in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and seeing where you're, where you're actually at instead of trying to conform to something else outside of you. That's part of the process of waking up and living this visionary life. Right. Yes. So that would be thing one. And thing two is, um, I think we're living in a time more than ever, we've got to take care of ourselves. And, you know, we're hearing stressful stuff on the news and, but we want to be the awake people, you know, living our, our journey truthfully and how do we contribute in all of this stress? You've got to start by checking in instead of checking out. So that means like I, every year I start a list of what are the processes I use on a continual basis right now to take care of myself and, and have them as a bank for what I need to come back to, you know, when I'm feeling off center, cause we all get off center, right? So it's just a question of how quickly do you, can you come back into alignment? So, and then I really take a look at that list and see what else I need to add so that I can live the life of my dreams this year and, and really contribute from an overflowing cup, not an empty one. Awesome. Yeah. So, well, so self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are, what are some of those things on your list? Would you mind sharing a couple of things? What are, you know, how do you get back to, um, you know, to balance when you're up, when you're off? Sure. Um, so for me, the, my life's realization <laughs> is that, you know, the body is the vessel for our vision. And um, if we want to make a change in the world, it starts here. So I, it's all the little things from hydrating to making sure my Wi-Fi router is off at night. And, you know, so that my brain actually gets to connect. And, and so I'm looking at everything in my environment. Does this add to my life force or does it take it away? Eating really cleanly. Um, you know, we can always, each of us from wherever we stand, no matter where we live, can do a little bit better job nourishing ourselves just at a fundamental physical level. And I really think that's, that's a big part of starting. And being clean about my thoughts. Like if I'm mad at somebody there's a way that I can shift that to a better place. I don't have to hold on to it that way. That's a choice. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So clean environment, clean about your body, paying attention to your body, and definitely um, also clean about your thoughts. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking at all of those things. Yeah. Awesome. Gosh, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Very, very good reminder too about how important our taking care of our body and being that self-aware is, you know, we get so busy. I think when we get on this little, like, I know I feel that way sometimes, you know, I get in this really like, Oh my gosh, we're doing all these things. And, you know, and then that self care falls behind, especially if you're someone who's in service to people. Yeah. You're serving others all the time. And so it's a good reminder to get back to that self care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else have a tip on what they do for their own self care? You know, what what do you do, Trina or Yolanda, to take care of yourself so you have your, your cup is full and you can give again? I <laughs> I, um, I take time every morning and every evening to just be in the space of me to kind of close everything down. Um, and I love stretching. Like, so I get on the floor and physically stretch because my body loves to move, but it also loves to be flexible. Um, and I can tell when I've like been sitting for too long, like at my desk working or driving or whatever that may be. So doing a lot of stretching and just a lot of, um, breathing um that those are a couple things that i do like every, every day and i also ask a great question i ask every day is like a couple of them how much fun can i have today nice. and what grand and glorious adventures can my body have today love and, it and it's not a figuring it out it's just asking the question and allowing all that energy and the universe spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, to contribute to you. So. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, great, great tip. Yeah. Let's have some adventures today. <laughs> <laughs> love and how about you, Yolanda? What's a oh. secret you use for self-care or what your routine is? So I won't talk as much as, well, my routine is not this daily routine because here I am being the misfit again. Um, I was really thinking about this. This is such a good question. And one of the things I decided that I needed to re-implement this year for self-care were short trips. So I traveled mm. a lot last year. Um, but I love to travel, but I didn't love all the travel last year. And I think it was because it was always for a purpose, for work, for speaking, for conference, for this, for that. And I miss the short getaways. I need those. Mm -hmm. I need the short drive to the mountain where I'm out in the fresh air, where I'm looking at the trees. Like I can feel it right now. I'm just getting happy on the inside. I need <laughs> that. I need the short drives to the beach. And um, I used to be very intentional about doing it once every two to three months. I had to have one scheduled. And last year, I had zero, y'all. Mm -hmm. None. And I miss it. So that's back on the calendar. I've already found my first cute little cabin. <laughs> Great. Go for a good steak and get away. Um, and the other is fun. So the word that my husband and I adopted was uncomfortable. So we are doing things that are intentionally fun and in, un, intentionally uncomfortable. So one of the things he did is surprise me last week with ballroom dancing. That's uncomfortable for him because he can't dance. And <laughs> everyone can dance. I know someone is gonna someone's gonna come in and say everyone can dance. Until you meet my husband, don't come in. So <laughs> it was so much fun though. We did the salsa and the bachata and the Latin, it was some Latin dancing, and we had the whole studio to ourselves, and it was so much fun. And um, next on the list is axe throwing i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> i know right i saw it on a tv show and i was like oh that's so valid and then i was like i want to do it i don't know why it's so uncomfortable but it's going to be loads of fun so fun is the word you know short getaways take care of yourself and have fun as often as you can so. <laughs> oh i love it although i have to tell you i've never heard of axe throwing so i Me i'm either. very much no. I did it. I you did, did it. it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I did it like a year ago. Oh, my God. I laughed so hard because I was, I, the first few times I did it, I got, you know, right in the middle of the target. And the rest of the time, the freaking axe, like, flipped off the floor every single time. 
but and so then I was just going up there doing whatever and people were laughing we were just having a good time so it was there you a lot. Go. <laughs> is it so it's a target so you're throwing an axe at a target mm -hmm. so it's yeah. like darts but it's an axe Yes, so it's like okay. a bigger version. You get a bigger oh, adrenaline, right? Okay. Oh, darts. Forget <laughs> darts. That's 2019. We're in 2020. We're throwing axes. <laughs> We're throwing axes. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's so. I learned something today. Never even knew about that. That's so cool. And that both of you here are doing this axe throwing thing. I'm intrigued. I have to join the party now. Louise, we have to catch up. <laughs> I mean, over. Y'all need to go to the other side. Trina and I are there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's so fun. Oh my God. I'm starting to cry. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. Oh, <laughs> that was just too fun. Well, that's great. Well, see, you're op we're opening this up, you know, and how people really see that there's a world out there of things we haven't done before. That certainly can help help you feel invigorated, alive, yeah. um, and for whatever purpose they serve in your life, they serve something. Like you said, you really looked at the, the words you wanted to create with your husband. You know, what's the energy you wanted to create, and you're taking action and doing it. And I just have to commend you, too, because we can talk, but you're taking action. Absolutely. That's the difference. You know, so that's the difference. So, you know, when, um, what are some, uh, I'm just thinking challenges right now. You know, I know, I know that all of us have, have challenges in, in our businesses, in our life. Um, you know, and we've, we've got to figure out how we're going to handle those challenges and how we move through that energy, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have a whole set of tools and just like Sinclair, I, have, I start with the body. So mine is brain, B-R-A-I-N. And it's, it's my system. And I look at body releasing, aligning with spirit, integrating and putting in the new program. Mm -hmm. And I use those tools every day. And I've taught those tools to thousands and thousands of people and the people using them up level their life, you know, so I like using those, those tools. So when I hit a bump, even my son this morning texted me, mom, we having a hard time at work. Can you work on me using biofeedback? I do biofeedback. It's like, did you do your positive points and clearings, honey? Have you used your tools? <laughs> right? Um, so so when, when you have a challenge in your life, or if you can think of one maybe where it really things got sticky, you know, what did you do to get out of it? Truth. I'm going to say truth. So my system that I always teach is always the truth. Um, touch the wall, reflect backwards, unlock the potential torch it, ignite yourself, and then hit the ground running because you can always move when you're standing in your truth. So mm -hmm. one of the challenges I have is as you continue to up level, there's always a new level of revelation. Mm -hmm. You learn something more about yourself. You, you feel it, you embody it, all of those good things. And I still have to keep moving um, with my clients regardless of where I am. And so I've learned how to use that as a tool. What is your truth right now, Yolanda? Why are you stuck? Don't lie to yourself. Why is this bothering you? Be honest with yourself. What is it that you really want? Be honest with yourself. Now go acquire it. Put the intention there and get it. Um, that helps me a lot. That keeps me moving. Mm -hmm. I love your self-talk. You know, my, you got great questions. My teacher said it's always about the question, not the answer. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, when you're asking the question, you are already answering it. That's right. That's right? right. You're asking truth questions. That's you know, right. Truth, truth questions. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? When you get stuck and you have a challenge, you know, what, where do you go? What do you do? What's the tool you use? Yeah, I, I like to keep it simple. I love what Yolanda said because I think it's absolutely about checking in with what you have control over. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is always going to be doing their stuff. And it, you know, that if you follow that and you let yourself be led by what's happening coming from the outside in, that, that makes for a really poor quality life. That's exhausting. So starting with where you have control, um, that's, that's what I always do too. I check in and I ask myself, okay, where am I making this difficult? You know, where am I making this too complicated? And it gives me back a way to immediately just ground into myself. And then I remember what I want. 
you know, discipline is remembering what you want. Mm -hmm. And it may not come in the way your ego thought it would, mm -hmm. but if you open to the truth and the simplicity of what you really want to experience, it's always available to you, you know? Mm, I love that. Wow, thank you. So thank where you. am I making this hard and remembering what I want? And remembering what you want. And again, checking in that self-awareness. So you too are doing really good self-aware questions, asking yourself good questions. Hmm, awesome. Thank you, Sinclair. Super. Okay, and Trina. Um, I do a lot of same thing, like when something's there and I like I'm talking about being the highly energetically aware. So I'm always aware of all this energy coming at the t all the time. Mm -hmm. And when I have something that's kind of like really poking me or I feel like constricted, I'm, I ask the question. I always go to question and I ask, okay, is this mine? Mm -hmm. Or what am I aware of here? Because mm -hmm. so many times, and even if it is mine, we're, we're aware of so much, and a lot of times it may not be ours. And we try to go to fixing a problem or coming up with a solution of something that isn't even ours to fix in the first place. Because it's we're, we're so good, especially many of us and probably a lot of you listening are these like innate little natural healers, and you just want to take on everybody else's stuff and fix it for them. Yeah. Um, so I go into like, is this mine? And then um, I basically am just like, okay, so everything I'm aware of, all the points of views, all the definitions, anything I've concluded, anything I've judged, I let it go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really do go into like asking that and then I release the energy around it. And, and it, if it really is mine, I also get out of the definitions that I've created around it. Um, but anything that might be holding me back. Mm -hmm. And one question that I love using, like with all of this, like we're talking about getting out of something or you're talking about a situation, I'd be like, okay, if I choose this, whatever that may be, um, like if I choose to attend this, what will my life be like? Mm -hmm. And if I don't choose, what will my life be like? And I, I perceive the, the emotions, the feelings, the sensations of both of those and whatever is more like expansive and great and generative, that's what I choose. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So good questions again. So you're asking yourself questions. Um, so, so notice there's a theme here, right? All of you are in that self, you're, you're, and that's probably why you're so successful. Because you're very good at going within and asking yourself those good questions, you know, and Trina was like, hey, you know, is this mine? And she's actually tuning into the feeling, too, aren't you? Yeah. About, hey, how would it feel if I choose A? How will it feel if I choose B? You know, so you're allowing yourself to move towards where you want to feel happy or content or set or whatever the emotion is. Yeah, and choosing to go the least restrict, re, least restrictive route because a lot of times we like choose what's really hard and then we try to make it light and easy versus actually just choosing what's light and fun. Sure, that's yeah. good. That and in that tension, yeah, you know, yeah, it's not cool. unlike uh, the you know driving your car. What's the <laughs> least restrictive <laughs> route <laughs> that you're gonna take, right? You know, we're all if you have a couple different roads to take, take the one that's that's take the high road. Yeah. You know, I think that's such a pitfall for overachievers and very mm -hmm. driven people. Um, mm -hmm. It's a tendency to say, well, I'm, I'm going to challenge myself. And sometimes it's not about the challenging yourself. Sometimes you just need to take the easy way. I promise y'all, I think I'm going to shop today and find me the frozen doll, Elsa, and just have me a lady. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to order a blanket or something. I feel it. I'm, I'm going to get it. Because this this might be a new thing emerging. Let it go. You <clears> don't <throat> always have to make it hard. You yes. don't always have to over accomplish. Sometimes you just need the peace. Oh, so much happens within the peace. I, I have to I have to share this story with you because this just came up this week when I was with a client. Um, and, and so the last couple weeks has just been like shining in my face. Years ago, I had a gentleman who was a firefighter, and I still remember him. He was a burly guy, beard, sat in my chair, um, you know, sensitive soul. And he said to me, he said, you know, when I'm fighting fires, 
I absolutely know that I can line my men up and have them, you know, create this line and stop the fire from going to burning down that building or that house. Like he was totally confident in his skills as a firefighter. And he said to me, he said, I'm in the zone when I'm doing that. Can you help me get in the zone with relationships? Yeah. And I went, whoa. I mean, the light bulb moment is still in my heart. <laughs> you know, I was like, that is such a great question. And he was, he had a girlfriend at the time and we were working on, um, on relationship issues. And we did, I helped him move back and, you know, move, move, move his, his being in the zone and having that confidence and that intuitive power in his other life stuff that he wanted to do. And he taught me a lesson that day. So I remember thinking it was the weekend and I thought, okay, I have to go to the bank. I have to go, you know, I've got to go here. I've got to do the errands. I've got to go to the grocery store. And I had my little list and I didn't want to go. I liked being in my zone, in my office, with my clients, with you being intuitive. That's my passion. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that that day I was going to like enter the world of the errands in a different place. I was going to be in the zone. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's like my car knew where to go. It just like went to Target. I got everything on sale. You know what I mean? Like it just, it just did what it was. It was a magical day. And I, he, I just realized that we can be in that place throughout your life if you're holding intention for it. Yeah. yeah. So true. If you're holding intention for it. So, and that's what you're all saying with your questions and, and asking and being aware, which is so cool. So we want to, we want to make sure that we're helping people see they can be there too. And they're learning from all of you, you know, and that we can always learn from others, you know, whether it's a friend, whether it's a client, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your kids, my goodness, my kids have taught me a lot. Right. You know, so it, it's that it's, it's allowing that. What I love about your story, Louise, is that, you know, I think a lot of us who want to live awake, really juicy lives end up chasing the peak state moments, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, kind of beating ourselves up like, oh, it's not, you know, 100% amazing, amazing today. I must be doing something wrong. And what you're talking about is cultivating that state in every moment with these small choices. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that so much. Yeah, thank you. I mean, and he just, I mean, I, like, this was 15 years ago, you guys. I mean, I still remember it, you know? So that, that just means it really touched me and it really woke something up in me. And so, you know, it is those moments. I call them those little light bulb moments, you know, that feed our soul and feed our spirit. Hold on to those. Let's hold on to those. You know, you all shared some with all of us here today, and I know that our audience is listening to this. And we're going to encourage all of you then to look for those in your life. You know, start asking yourself those good questions. It's not about the grandiose New Year's resolution. It's more about you, <laughs> your intentions, your goals, and for, for um, including that, you know, those questions about what adventure can I have today, like Trina said. You know, what adventure can I have with my body today? Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and if you're inclined so much, you know, definitely go axe throwing. You know, it sounds like something I'm going to do. <laughs> it's not just for the fun of it, right? And to try something new. Um, so get out of your comfort zone. Try something new that just excites you. And, uh, and we want you all to have an awesome, you know, an awesome 2020. We will be back again next month. Um, any final little tidbit or share that you want to um, end with today? Anybody? Stay true to yourself. Live your best life. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. You're welcome. I'd say keep it simple. Keep it simple. Awesome. Keep it simple. And Trina? Have fun. Choose, choose to have fun. Choose to have fun. Awesome. Choose mm -hmm. to have fun. And I'll say stay in the zone. Stay in <laughs> your zone. <laughs> Awesome. Well, have an awesome day, everybody. We'll see you here next month. Thank you again, ladies, for your powerful work and for sharing today. Thank you. Thank you.